Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Natalie Emery. I'm with uh, Global um, Logistics Cluster Projects and Outreach Officer. Great to be here. Thank you so much for making the time to be here. Um, I hope you'll enjoy the next couple of hours. It will be a good time to have discussion, brainstorming, and we'll get to know a bit more about the Global Logistics Meeting. Just to let you know, this meeting will be recorded for all the colleagues who are not able to join us. So I hope that's fine. We can go to the next slide. So just, there's four different languages today. We're going to be speaking in English, but you'll have the, it'll be um, translated live in French, Arabic, and Spanish. In order to access the interpretation, you can go into the controls in the Zoom. You'll find an icon that says interpretation. And once you click on it, you should be able to access the different languages and you can choose whichever one um, you need. Please let us know if they're not working or if there's any issues there. And this is a brief agenda for today. It's only an hour and a half. We're going to start with some opening remarks and discuss the goal for this GLM. We're going to look at key takeaways from the last time we had a hybrid GLM where we were having in different locations. And then we're going to look at the process for this meeting. And then we'll have a little bit of a discussion, questions, answers, um, any other considerations. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Meiling Fauchon and Mary Jeliti. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on where you're connected, connecting in the, in the world. Uh, I hope everybody had the opportunity to click on the interpretation button and that you can hear us in all languages. Um, first of all, what a turnout. I see nearly 150 people already online. Uh, we know that we have colleagues also in meeting rooms in, uh, in various countries, in two avocations. Thank you very much for this. Um, this. This kickoff meeting is really about going through the journey that we've been on for the past, uh, past two years to ensure that we are hearing the voices of all our partners uh, at global level, of course, but also, and more importantly, at field level, <clears throat> so that we can, sorry, I see, I know it's your, it's your screen. Uh, there's a, no, okay. Maybe it's mine. Okay. Um, sorry, sorry for the technical uh, interruptions. Uh, so no, it's it's about hearing all of us, uh, all the issues that we're sharing. Um, it's it's about engaging with the partners, um, but it's also about the engagement of the partners with the cluster, so that we can help um, find solutions together um, to to resolve the problems that we're facing on a daily basis in so many of the emergencies. In, in the world. Um, the cluster approach is nearly 20 years old. In fact, next year we'll celebrate the 20 years anniversary of the, of the cluster approach. Uh, and what a journey there. Um, the, the, the initial aim of the cluster approach was to ensure more predictability uh, and, and coordinated approach to respond to emergencies. And, and I think that this is, this is something that we have managed to do. Um, I was referring a few months ago to one of the, the, the things that struck me the most um, after, after the, the Palestine emergency happened, uh, which is that at the first meeting on um, a couple of days after, after the, the incident in, in October, nearly a year ago, um, we organized the first cluster meeting and we had over 450 participants on the line. 450 people, uh, from uh, organizations that got together uh, on the very first date and that wanted to understand from each other who's doing what, what's happening, uh, how can uh, partners leverage each other's capability, who's, who's having trucks or warehouses or, or emergency response starting, who has which pipeline, uh, and how can they get together to ensure a better response. And at the same time, how can we as a cluster, uh, in light with our mandate, support all these uh, all these efforts now the 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 state of the world is not getting any better um the emergencies are uh, increasing the number of protracted emergencies is also still there they're, they're remaining uh, at the same time we're all feeling uh, the cuts across the the various budgets 
uh, we need to coordinate better, we need to pull our resources, we need to be more efficient in the way we respond. And, and, and again, that is the core aim of, of the work of the logistics cluster. Um, <clears throat> We started about two years, uh, two years ago um, a journey to try to bridge some of the gap uh, that we were facing in bringing more of that field voice. We have our operations in the field. We also have a global cell here in, in, in Rome. And we wanted to ensure that the global meetings, as we call them, uh, are not only representative of the HQ voices, if you will, but rather that they start embracing all the voices and all the issues that we're facing at country level. It was the case uh, to some extent, uh, because we're working with all the coordinators who are in the field working with all of you, uh, but we wanted to bring that to those global conversations to ensure that we continue to prioritize the right issues, to remain agile, to adjust our strategy, and to help respond to your, to your needs. Um, so in, in, in June uh, 2023, we engaged in a whole reflection exercise, uh, quite simple. Are we doing the right thing? And are we doing it right? Um, and that was an important, yet simple, but important question. Are we responding to what we need to respond to? Uh, and if you move to the next slide, and I'll come back to this slide after, but so in, 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 June, uh, in June 2023, we looked at three uh, lenses, if you will. The first one uh, is, are the priorities that are set forth by all of you partners meeting the cluster mandate? We cannot do everything. We all have you know, our, our, our obligations and responsibility. The cluster mandate is very clear. Are we responded to responding to uh, that, that cluster mandate? Are the activities that we are pursuing to support the community meeting that mandate? And that's number one. The second thing, are we meeting field needs? Everything that we do must be to support the field. The third one was in all of this, and as we funnel, uh, as we asked ourselves that question, are we all aligned with, and are the activities that we're doing aligned with the cluster values as we have set them in our strategy um, for, the, for the next four years? Um, so that, that's, that's the first step. And I think it's important to go back to this point because this is where we're coming from. We need to make sure that we're all aligned in what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the fact that we are supporting the field. If we go back to the the previous slide, sorry. So this was, this was June 2023. And as mentioned, those meetings were happening in person uh, and they were mostly uh, gathering people from the headquarters of the organizations. The, the, the participation of colleagues from, field, from the field organization was quite limited. So in November, we decided to go for a different format. And we piloted the hybrid approach, and, and Natalie will come back to that, and, and, and Mary in a, in a minute, uh, to make sure that we could get those conversations at the field level and bring them back to the global level. So we tested it, uh, and we were partially very happy with the results, but a few things were missing, and we needed to tweak it so that we could really ensure that those conversations great conversation uh, that have happened in November 2023 at field level could be then reintegrated uh, into the global conversation. So that's what we did in May. Um, so the, the, the cluster colleagues gathered in Rome uh, in May this year, and we brought back all these issues that you have discussed uh, in, in the countries and in the regions. Um, and and the, the conversations continued, the solutions, um, the um, exchange of best practices, of challenges, so that we can uh, find the, the various solutions to some of the issues that we're facing. Um, and so here we are now with a revised version of, of a hybrid model, uh, where we have encompassed and, and, and integrated some of the comments and the feedback that we have received from you guys. Um, I understand it's around 350 people in total 
uh, that have registered for the event, of which one third will be in person in the various countries, uh, which is fantastic. Um, in 12 locations this year, last year was 11, this year will be 12. Uh, and with the possibility then, uh, and Natalie will we'll get into that, to bring that back into the global conversation. I'll stop here because this meeting is not about getting into the content at this point, but rather to explain you the journey that we have followed and why we have followed this journey and what we want to try to achieve uh, with this, uh, this meeting. So we need to continue to foster these frank discussions that we have at the cluster and to inform each other uh, of what we're doing and how we're doing it and how we can be more efficient. I'll, I'll stop you here on the, on the journey and I'll hand it over to uh, Mary to talk to us about um, the why, why this hybrid model and, and where it's taking us. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, if we could go two slides ahead and we'll have a quick look at what we talked about in November. First of all, I'd like to say I'm very pleased uh, to be here with all of you online. Um, and very pleased to see, I just had a quick look down the list of people saying who, who was here. Very pleased to see some current colleagues and former colleagues, a couple of names from Goal. Hi. Uh, friends, old and new from all over the world, some of them in the places we know and some have moved on to new places. Um, and I think the reason I wanted to call that out, to say that, is because that's kind of the point of what we're doing in the next five, six weeks. Um, the idea is to celebrate the diversity of experiences and skills and views that we have amongst us, because it's that diversity that's going to bring us the innovation and the ideas that we need to solve our challenges. And um, what we started to do last November, um, like a lot of global bodies of discussion and, and think, thinking and talking, we felt that there was really a, um, a distance perhaps, or we were worried that there might be a distance between what we were doing at all at this, this headquarters level and, um, and what's really going on with you folks down uh, at the sharp end. So we wanted to make sure that we're connecting with the reality of the field. It's a reality check and making sure that we're hearing from people who are actually going through the challenges and um, the ones who have the needs. And that's the idea of what we did last year. We had, um, we had an online meeting, a little bit more expansive than this one, a little bit more like um, what you'll see from us on the 6th of November and from you as well. We had an online meeting talking about our strategic updates and some ideas and things. And then we had on this all on the same day last year, which was quite challenging administratively, um, in-person discussions in many of the same locations um, and hopefully with many of the same colleagues so that we get this journey and we, we keep this continuity of ideas going. Uh, and then we close that with um, an academic marketplace. So we had academic colleagues sharing with us some of their really super interesting ideas um, and seeing how we can uh, learn from those, be inspired by those, really make um, parallels from that. Now, um, we talked last year about different needs and challenges. We talked about prioritization of those needs and challenges because of course, as we all know in the humanitarian sector and even more these days than before, we, it's not possible to do everything. So we prioritize what we believe to be the most important, most strategic um, challenges to solve. And last year, we did that through these four categories that you can see on the screen, the collaboration, the advocacy, private sector, and other, for want of a better title. Um, and it was the folks in, in the countries who talked through these topics and talked about their local contextual needs and challenges under these, under these um, headings. Then we collated all of that information uh, we, there were some feedback sessions in January, of course, to, to not leave everybody hanging, but then we brought it to the global meeting in May. If we could go to the next slide, please. Um, the global meeting in person in May, of course, this is also a global meeting. Um, and using some of those ideas, 
we really built on some of that discussion, having a, a little bit more time, a couple of days to go through um, and having colleagues from 43 organizations, as well as five of the field cluster coordinators with us. Um, we really looked at some of the topics that have been raised as priorities from those country and regional locations. And we looked at preparedness uh, and how the current preparedness work might help us to transition out of some of our long running clusters. Um, and the colleagues um, will we'll look at that again this year. We looked at how, although the cluster approach is meant to increase predictability and therefore has a, a sort of a standard framework, it doesn't have to be one size fits all. We talked about the importance of digitalization for many aspects through traceability, through also um, parts of localization as well and, and various other subtopics there. And that's a conversation that's continuing. Um, obviously, uh, this global meetings are not just about the work of the logistics cluster teams, but also about all of the partners who are part of the logistics cluster, whether it's the global logistics cluster at the headquarter level or a country logistics cluster. Um, without partners, uh, we're talking to an echoing room. So, uh, of course, we, we were delighted to have updates and innovations from the partners um, who were able to join us in Rome. And we had a big discussion also about collective advocacy. It's not something that we've discussed at a headquarters level before, um, or at least not for many years. And um, there seems to be a groundswell, a movement towards making supply chain and logistics topics more strategic. And, 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 and there's an opportunity here for us to grab uh, onto some of those events that are happening and, and some of that feeling that's going on uh, and really push some of our um, common challenges, not just in one country, but common across all the countries. Some of the things that we all face from NGO uh, to UN to even private sector in some cases and try to get some movement on some of those topics. Uh, we also talked about medical logistics, which I know makes a lot of people happy. I'm sure I'm just going to throw that one in there because we did we did discuss it. Um, moving to the next slide, we can see what we're now trying to do following that journey. What we're trying to do here. The idea is to build on the topics that were discussed um, in November 2023 in the countries. They were elaborated here in Rome in May. And now we're going to go into even further depth on some of those topics. The idea is it, but it's once again to, to make it contextual, to make it relevant to the context that we're working in, which we know are different and have slightly different challenges in each place. So it's how does this discussion, how does this idea fit with your local context? Um, and then of course, it's 12 months nearly 12 months since we did the last um, these kind of strategic meetings in the countries and regions. And so what's changed in that time, what was a priority back then may not be a priority anymore. So um, these discussions always need to be updated to make sure that we're keeping up with how the world changes. Um, and I think I'll hand back to Mai to talk about the, uh, the outcomes. So, sorry, the outcomes that, uh... Uh, that you can see uh, on the screen, uh, really what we expect at the end of this journey of this hybrid uh, GLM is really the connection piece, right? Uh, so that people can uh, gain insight and, 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 and listen to each other. Um, and all these issues, sorry, I still have a technical issue on my computer. Uh, and, and, and all the, the challenges or the opportunities or the innovations uh, that you guys uh, are facing or having in the countries can be uh, shared so that you guys know who's doing what and are able to connect with each other. Um, beyond the connection, it's about exchanging really. Uh, and there we, we see a lot of opportunities. We know that there's already a lot going on and we, we really wish that this can continue. And we are here to act as a platform to facilitate this uh, as much as, as possible. At the end of this uh, journey also, we would like to ensure that participants had the opportunity to 
share some of their solutions uh, and see what can be scaled, what can be replicated, what can be implemented. Um, it is also about strengthening the network. Uh, we all rotate. We all know that uh, people move on to other functions, to other countries. They're bringing their experience with them from, from one country to the next. Uh, but it's also about strengthening that, that network that the logistics cluster is, because that is our, our, our strength. Uh, and then, as, as Mary just mentioned, it is really for us as a global cluster team, but also for our cluster coordinators in the various countries to ensure that we are adjusting, adapting to what your priorities are. Um, and, and this is a constant and continuous uh, adjustment that, uh, that we need to, to make. A strategy set for a... a a period of time, but of course we are going through it every time uh, and through those dialogues and through those GLMs uh, alongside with the meetings um, in, in the field, we are trying to constantly adjust um, to, to the priorities that you guys are facing. Yeah. So with that said, and, and with, uh, with trying to keep it as short as we can, because Natalie and the colleagues uh, in the field are going to route us through, wow. through some of the uh, topics. Um, but thank you very much for being there. We count on your contribution. We keep on saying it. We've been saying it for the past two years. The logistics cluster is a group of partners that gets together and that gets things done because we are logisticians. And so we need to continue, keep that spirit, uh, share and, 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 and engage. So all of these, we, for all of this, we need your contribution. And we really hope that this opportunity and this hybrid, um, will be, uh, will be the chance to, to continue to do that. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much, Melina and Mary. It's great to see this journey and progression over the last couple of years and where we are now. As mentioned, this GLM, we already have around, I think it's around 500 participants who have signed up. So we can see a lot of engagement, a lot of involvement, a lot of the, the need to collaborate, to engage and discuss different challenges, ideas and so forth in humanitarian logistics. And just to mention, the idea to do the GLM in country was actually um, first came from several partners at one of the previous um, global logistics meeting, where there was a discussion and said, we need to do this in country. And that's where it started. So I'm going to do a, a quick, if you can go to the next slide, I'm going to do a deep dive into the November GLM from 2023. Why are we looking at that uh, meeting that was hap happened a year ago? It's because it was a similar approach. That's the one that we did in, in 11 different countries and we're doing something similar now. So last year we had 11 um, locations and almost uh, 900 participants, both online and in person. I'm gonna go to the next slide. All right, so I'm just going to discuss very briefly a few of the outcomes from the previous um, meeting. Of course, we had very important online discussions. We had academic contributions, we had experts. Um, providing feedback, but a core part of the meeting was the in-person um, session where participants came together to focus on identifying, prioritizing, and finding possible ways to address their logistic, logistics needs and challenges. Participants worked together to identify both current or existing and future challenges that they face in humanitarian logistics. You identified current issues such as access, suppliers engagement, funding, as you can see here, while also anticipating um, future challenges, such as environmental sustainability and the need for stronger government engagement. After identifying these challenges, participants in the different locations then ranked them by priority. These priorities were agreed collectively by in each in-person meeting as the most urgent. And you can see that here in this table. Um, what you see here is a simplified analysis, of course, because there were a huge amount of topics, a lot of discussions, as you can imagine, and we consolidated the challenges that came up the most, most frequently. Um, to note that we also did not include challenges that were um, specific to one country. We tried to find the main challenges that went across the spectrum. And also we did not look at external factors that were completely outside of our control, such as e economic instability, political insecurity, and so forth. And just some reflections on this um, analysis here. Um, you can see that the future challenges highlight the need for sustainable forward thinking approaches, such as environmental sustainability, which is now seen as critical in logistics planning. This reflects a shift from the short-term operational concerns to a broader systemic and environmental concerns. You will also see that funding and access remain top priority. And there's also shift to increased coordination 
and information sharing. Um, future challenges highlight the need for increased coordination. Like we, if they were looking, there were many locations that we need regional clustering coordination and engagement. Um, we looked at the importance of increased information sharing at a regional level and at different levels um, to improve the overall logistics response. And this again reflects the growing complexity of humanitarian crisis that Maylene was mentioning earlier and the need that we have to have int integrated collaborative approaches. I'm going to go to the next slide, please. And then what happened in the in-person sessions last year, participants took the top needs and challenges, and they looked at four categories or pathways to address these challenges. We looked at collaboration, we looked at advocacy, working with the private sector and other. As, as Mary mentioned, there's many other ways to address them, but why did we choose these, section, these categories? Collaboration. I, I think we all know here, and the reason why we're here, we know that collaboration is an inherent part of humanitarian logistics, right? No single organization can provide all the resources, expertise, or reach to deliver assistance efficiently. Advocacy is what allows organizations, allows us as a collective to push for, uh, for policy changes, to secure funding, to ensure that logistics issues are recognized at the highest levels. And this can be especially important when we need to influence government and donor decisions that directly impact the speed and effectiveness of humanitarian logistics. <clears throat> private sector. The private sector holds a large amount of logistical expertise, resources, and technology that can greatly improve the speed and efficiency of humanitarian operations. And so that's why we're looking at them as a category. And of course, the other category was for needs and challenges that did not fit into these three um, areas, but are important to address. So the discussions that we had last year gathered, um, the discussions we had helped shape many ongoing actions at both country and global level. And now we will hear from a few colleagues um, who were in these different meetings on, on the outcomes from there. So I'm going to go to the next slide and I'd like to see if Cecilia is online and can tell us a bit more about the Bangkok um, yes, Global I Logistics am. Meeting. Yes, we are. Hi, Natalie. And I realized. I think it was Cecilia. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so yeah, let me let me uh, share Julia, with we you some. You. Uh, <laughs> I'm unmuted. One, two, one, two. No, you still cannot. I, I, I can hear Cecilia. I'm online. I can hear her. Okay. So should I go then? Yes, go ahead, Cecilia. Okay, thank you. So the so the meeting in Bangkok. So the meeting in Bangkok was organized uh, by the colleagues we have um, in Bangkok, uh, sitting in the regional bureau in Bangkok, and gathered about fifteen participants. Um, it was over uh, over a couple of days. So I mean, of course, the the, the attendance was not exactly during the. The old days, but um, but it was overall about fifteen participants, um, and so from government development agencies, national NGO, international NGOs, and UN agencies, and um, it was particularly marked by a strong support from DG Echo because they hosted the meeting, um, and um, yeah, and that was also. A, a, a great sign of, uh, of of good collaboration and uh, and involvement from from the from the partners, um, and over the, the 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 meetings and over the these uh, these discussions, um, the participants identified and discussed specific and local challenges, like for instance the last mile delivery in Southeast Asia. So when you have um, uh, different islands or in the Pacific. Same challenge when you have a, a different island and transportation can be uh, can be can be challenging, um, or 
again, specific local challenges like the transport and importation along the Myanmar and, and Thailand border. But the overall challenge and, and, and the one that really stood out was um, the collaboration and the need for a regional information sharing platform. Uh, that was not really involving the Pacific region because most of the partners in the region are working in different um, ADN countries and in the Pacific. And, um, and all the partners present um, really welcomed the fact that to be given this opportunity to, to meet, to get to know each other and to have this platform to, to discuss, um, to, to discuss uh, regional challenges. Um, so at the end of the meeting, it was agreed with the, with the participants that, okay, participants cannot commit at this stage to concrete actions, um, but the, the, the main recommendation was to maintain these meetings, to maintain this platform, to build um, a network at the regional level that will become a regional logistics working group, to keep the momentum, to follow up on the GLM, And based on the challenge, um, engage more stakeholders um, and be in a position that, okay, we can um, agree together on action and we can take concrete steps. So after the GLM, uh, the, the logistics cluster team in, in Bangkok prioritized, prioritized sorry, uh, developing and maintaining this regional community they drafted term of reference for an Asia and Pacific regional logistic, logistics group, uh, which is now, so since uh, the last GLM, which is now meeting every two months, more if necessary, but this is like the, the, the frequency they, they agreed on. Um, and they have a platform, so basically a WhatsApp group, uh, where they can exchange uh, information, uh, opportunities, um, so training opportunities, for instance, or, or, or information about events that can interest the, 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 the logistics center in the region. Um, but yeah, they're shooting information on this group. Uh, they're meeting regularly now. And, and these, like having a regional information platform was... Um, uh, was the main recommendation and was really what uh, what stood out during uh, during that meeting and that was what um, has been able to, um, to 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 create and 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 to agree on during the the last GLM in the region. So it was uh, a very uh, nice um, launch of this uh, of this uh, community um, of this platform that is now living and, and existing. Thank you. Thanks so, so much, Cecilia. Yeah, that was for the Bangkok GLM meeting. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Questions for me? Perfect. Thank you so much. And it's great to hear of a logistics working group in the region um, and the meeting. It's, it's fantastic. I'm going to hand over to Ayak, who was in the Venezuela um, logistics meeting last year. Ayak, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Natalie, and thank you, colleagues. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Venezuela Logistic Cluster. It's a little bit early for Venezuela to share the good practices, but I think our coordinator there is connected. So if there's anything I'm missing, please feel free to add. So as my colleague Cecilia explained, um, I was able to participate on the GLM, GLM held in Caracas. It was a very productive meeting because we were able to align the global strategy with the country strategy. So we had a very open discussions with our partners there, all the NGOs and other partners. And from this discussion that we had, uh, we were able to add some additional topics and update our work plan. It was something very surprising. We thought we had all the information in, but from the discussion that we have from the GLM, there were some missing pieces like the private sector missing piece. So we say, hey, we should include this in the work plan. 
And that was very uh, productive and surprisingly productive because from there we were able to also create other working groups. There was the need of the creation of, we call it buenas practicas in Spanish, good practices, where we were able to share all the different good practices from our partners inside Venezuela. But we were kind of inspired from the GLM presentations. We remember UNHCR presentation, the presentation about Gaza. So partners in Venezuela really liked those presentations so they could share the practices. Also one very important point that we discussed in that GLM was the gaps and needs present in Venezuela. We were able to validate our analysis, our report and partners were basically saying, yes, these are the gaps that we need to work on. And actually this helped us to update our documented concept of operations. So from there, uh, we are a year, well, almost a year after, we have a working group in place. We are sharing practices. We're sharing the challenges related to fuel importation. So from the GLM discussion, several interesting outcomes were, were basically created from that discussion. So yeah, it was a very useful discussion forum for all partners locally. So thank you, Natalie. Um, thanks so much, Ayak. And I'll just remind everyone here that if you have any questions for any of the presenters and the speakers, please feel free to chat to type the question in the in the chat box. Um, and we'll definitely have some time for this after the presentations. And I want to hand over to my colleague Najit from Damascus, Syria. They also had a meeting last year, and they'll be having one again this year. So, uh, Najit, are you there? Yes. yes. Uh, hello, Natalie. I'm there. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Yes, perfect. I'm here with uh, not just only me. I have a bunch of great uh, partners from uh, UN agencies and, and international NGOs, and I have so many people online, and they are living this very dynamic situation and sad situation, and yet they decided to uh, join, so I'm really grateful. Uh, last year, we conducted the in-person session, and we had many gaps in need. But I will mention uh, like the top, uh, the most uh, raised points. First one was funding. And we decided to uh, 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 overcome this issue uh, through two things. First, advocacy. I mean, liaising more with donors to make them increase the understanding of the impact of the shortage of funding in the logistics sector that it will impact the whole work. And also through information sharing. So we established uh, one of the things that we did that we established uh, monthly reporting about the impact of the Red Sea project uh, on the cost of the shipping line. The, the cost increased from 20% to up to uh, 60%. And uh, also the time uh, uh, expanded from the average of two weeks up to two months and sometimes even more. So we uh, advocated for this impact. Uh, one of the other uh, gaps uh, we faced in Syria is about fuel. Uh, there is a lack of fuel on the local market, and there is also a lack of private sector that is certified on the local market uh, as well. So we try to sort this out through collaboration uh, because some uh, UN agencies managed to uh, get importation approval to get the fuel, and, and then uh, they were willing to support other partners to provide them this fuel on cost recovery basis. WFB was one of uh, the agencies to approve. We also uh, did kind of information sharing with other UN agency, and I'm, I'm specifying UN because they are the only one who managed to get importation approval from the governmental parties on how they can get importation uh, approval by themselves. And one of the partners managed to do it this year, thankfully. Uh, also, one of the uh, gaps that was raised was uh, the supplier database and the supplier's uh, capacity. And uh, we did that, uh, we uh, tried to, uh, the action that we did about that is we updated the logis Syria logistics capacity assessment by the end of 2023. Uh, so also partners here, they all were willing to share with us all the suppliers list they have. And then we also reached the private sector and we uh, managed to make this compile of uh, suppliers and all over aspects in transportation and almost many things. And it has also other, and uh, we uh, asked the, uh, we also dedicated some parts speaking about their capacity. So for example, for transport companies, we asked them to put how many trucks they have, what is the capacity of the trucks, whereas the areas they're functioning in and so on and so far. 
Of course, uh, there is a lot of work to do more, but uh, this is what we managed to do. Uh, well, part of the things that we managed to do last year. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and a huge thank you to all the colleagues in Syria who are going through quite a, a big crisis and are still making the time to meet and, and strategize and, and come together to, to um, discuss challenges and needs and how to address them. So thanks for that. And great to hear these amazing outcomes from your last meeting and look forward to hearing more about the, this meeting and the outcomes from this one. Um, and I'll go over to the next slide. I'd like to introduce a colleague from Burkina Faso. Um, they also had a, a global logistics meeting in Burkina Faso last year, and they will be having it again this year. So, um, Bess, if are you online? Yes. Uh, yes good uh, morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm online, and um, Munira also is online, and she will start uh, doing the first part, and I will uh, give some updates at the end. So, Munira, over to you. Best we, can, we can't hear Munira if she's speaking. I think she's, she was on mute. Yes, now I think it's okay. Could you hear me? Thank you. Good, good morning, everyone. So I, I was saying that uh, the, the GLM meeting last year facilitated valuable exchanges and highlighted several outcomes uh, about Burkina Faso logistics need and challenges. Uh, and the most challenges uh, that we can mention was access constraints due to the situation, to the security situation, and also the founding. As you know, Burkina Faso is recognized that has one of the most neglected crisis in the world. And also, uh, after these two challenges, we can also mention uh, the capacity of air transportation, uh, lack of dedicated means, the adaptability of landing area that can impact air operation. Uh, that is to say that airships are not adapted. So sometimes dust may damage uh, aircraft. Uh, we have also the capacity building for low guys, uh, partners, and local authorities. Uh, the adaptability of logistics infrastructures like roads uh, due to the situation, to the security situation, roads are damaged by rain and also by uh, explosives. Uh, we also discuss about storage capacities in some regions. Uh, some partners uh, find out that storage capacity is not sufficient in, in the hard to reach areas. We have the improving of rapid response mechanism, RRM, and also collaboration between agencies the information sharing, this is also a challenge for Burkina Faso. So uh, these are the topics discussed last year. And I think uh, there is some change. Uh, there is some improving about these needs and challenges. Uh, so I will let uh, Beth uh, come through uh, these improving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Munira. Quickly, I will go uh, through the uh, a quick update on uh, what Munira has just said. Uh, for hard to, hard to reach areas, they are unfortunately increasing. Uh, the Access Working Group uh, lead uh, attended this meeting the last year and uh, brought expertise in access, which helped us map to map uh, the road access conference in January 2025, uh, 2024. DHA funded an helicopter in May 2024, and Airbus funding is still ongoing for the logistic cluster, which is having a tremendous impact on partners' delivery. Efforts are done to secure airstrips and landing areas have increased slightly. I think uh, since last year, we have uh, three 
two to three more areas where uh, UNHAS can learn. With good collaboration uh, with HE and HELP partners, uh, benef uh, 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 the logies benefited uh, from several training in procurement, warehousing, and handling. Internally, logistic cluster staff benefited from GLC trainings like LCI, LRT, and WFP, procurement cold chain management. Due to the, the, security region, the, the security situation, the cluster has not been able to support the rehabilitation of the infrastructure. During the joint ICCD mission uh, we are doing, local authorities raised the request, but nothing has been done in this sense so far. Storage has been increased in all apps facilitating air transportation and stock management for partners. With the support of HQ and OCHA, the logistic cluster did much advocacy. Uh, we would like to thank Cecilia and uh, Natalie for uh, the, the, the huge support. And uh, uh, is the only sector, we are the only sector in the country to be funded at 81%. In the CWO. The second cluster following is nutrition, and they are at 45%. Suggestions were done to start prepositioning goods for RLM project, and some partners adopted uh, this strategy. And within JCOR, we are working to prioritize RLM shipment in coordination with ICCG prioritization solo. Information sharing has slightly improved as the cluster adopted a partner strategy. What subgroup have been created for all region? and crucial information has been shared according to specific rules. I can give an example, information on convoy with disappearing message as soon as partners open them. Because of security issues, we cannot uh, just send, uh, uh, how can I say, a uh, message uh, and leave them in the WhatsApp groups. So as soon as you open the, 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 the message, it will disappear, but you are aware of uh, what is happening. A convoy is uh, um, uh, under preparation. And if you are interested, you can contact us and we'll see with WFP and OCHA how to deal with your shipment. Effort still needs to be done from partner's side in terms of information sharing. Regarding security for humanitarian actors, the situation in the CO is getting worse, unfortunately. Last but not least, communication in hard to reach areas with tech common service in the country, things are getting better in the field. There is a need to advocate for the continuity of this service in remote areas with a mobile uh, uh, unit they can yes. deploy. Yes. That's so sorry. Am I might ask you the to last point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the last point. Yeah. It was the last point. Oh, okay, it was the last point. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks so much, uh, Bess, for sharing um, this information. Uh -huh. It looks like you have a big group of, of participants and partners joined in the last meeting. Um, yes. And I hope that these conversations can continue to, to increase the collaboration and, and, and support towards your, the response in Burkina Faso. And I just, sure. uh, there's a question. There, there's a question for Cecilia, but I see she's responded. It was a question on a regional approach in Thailand, um, that it would include a wider geographical coverage. Um, and the question is, if I understood correctly, could you please provide an overview of which locations are included in the scope? And so the answer was that the Regional Logistics Working Group for Asia is for Asia and the Pacific. So for the entire region, region in there. So feel free to keep on adding questions in the chat box and we're here. All right, if I can, we can go to the next slide. Fantastic. This, these were just a few reflections on the last meeting, some outcomes that we had in uh, the different locations, but of course it was 11 locations. We couldn't have everyone um, speak, otherwise this meeting might be a, a bit longer than what we have, than what we have allocated for this, um, but they were great outcomes. It was great to have this conversation. Sometimes we will get into a meeting, we'll discuss something and, and there isn't a way forward or something to do about that thing. So we move on to the next one. So at least there is that conversation and that discussion and we come together and agree on them. Um, looking for, uh, going forward, looking into this, this GLM at this time. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. This is what is looking, how it's looking. So day one, this is us today. We're having a kickstart, the official kickstart of the global logistics meeting. Day two will be the in-person meeting. So it will be in 12 different locations. Each will have a different, um, on a different day. 
And then we'll all come back together in day three, we'll be, there will be an online consolidation. That means every um, different country or region that has had the meeting will be able to share the main outcomes, discussions, any key or insight that was um, achieved during the meeting. Next slide, please. The in-person meeting will be addressing three main topics. You'll notice that it's only three. We have reduced the number of topics to be discussed in a meeting because sometimes we are over ambitious and we have meetings and we try to pack them with so many different topics that it becomes um, quite, uh, quite busy. So our main topics for this meeting in person will be looking again at our operation on strategic needs and challenges and the priorities. So for the meetings that had that conducted this exercise last year, they'll be going through that list and saying, okay, are these still our needs and challenges? Is the priority, has the priority changed? Which one is the most critical and so forth? For the places that haven't done a meeting, they'll go through this exercise and list the different needs and challenges, prioritize them and see which ones can be addressed through using collaboration, through um, private sector and through advocacy. Then we're going to do a deep dive. Following the, the GLM in May that was here in, in, uh, in Rome, we did a deep dive into advocacy topics um, and approaches. And what we're going to do now, we're going to do this as well in country. So we're looking at collective advocacy for humanitarian logistics, where we agree on common advocacy priorities and have consensus on which ones should be prioritized, how and by whom, of course. Lastly, we're going to close with um, the role of preparedness. And this session is really designed to, to come together with all the participants to look at the initial steps towards considering implementing to varying degrees, depending on the context at a preparedness approach, both at country and regional levels, either if the logistics cluster is there and active or not. The goal is really to explore how logistics preparedness can be strengthened and localized to build sustainable and long-term supply chain solutions. And if we could go to next slide, please. So these are the 12 locations that will be having uh, a meeting. As you can see, we've got, um, we've got Burkina Faso and, and Syria, where you've heard from recently, but we also have South Sudan, we have Venezuela, Barbados, Ethiopia, Nigeria. So, and these are the dates. So in case you're able, you are in these countries or you are able to travel there, feel free to get in touch um, with the cluster coordinator or the different focal points. This is also available. This information is also available on the web page. You have the date of the meeting and you have the contact people because I'm sure they'll love to, to have you there. Next slide, please. And then lastly, we of course, we have the consolidation, the, the, the online consolidation where we bring in all the information from different locations. We consolidate it to then recap the highlights, the key takeaways, um, we will have the different reflections. We'll organize them in different groups. You'll see um, some of them are regional. Some of them are also there because of the time zone. Um, and we'll have these discussions. We'll have opportunities to engage. This is really the online meeting on November 6th is really about engagement. So whoever's joining online, we're going to welcome your input, your questions, your comments um, on, on what is being presented. So that is the goal of the meeting. And next slide, please. And then we come to considerations and discussions. We would now like to hear from you if there are any questions, any thoughts on what we've just discussed. Um, are there any other important issues or topics that we haven't covered? And I'm sure there are many, but are there anything pressing that you feel we should be addressing and discussing? So we just would like to open the floor to um, participants right now. We got two hands up. Okay, fantastic. I think um, participants are able to unmute themselves. Is that, yeah? Yep. All right. So I'd like to hand it over to Hama. 
Oui, bonjour, chers collègues. Bonjour, euh, bonsoir selon la position géographique de tout un chacun. Merci vraiment pour cette, cette réunion très, très pertinente pour nous les autres qui sont sur le terrain. Je porte une mention particulière à la collègue du Burkina qui a, qui a fait une, une parfaite présentation, qui a vraiment cou couvert toute, euh, toutes les difficultés que nous rencontrons dans notre zone, parce qu'on partage la même, les mêmes difficultés. Comme vous le savez, au Sahel, on est tous dans la même situation. Elle a couvert presque tout. Et j'aimerais vraiment que lors des discussions, que ce, 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 cet aspect-là soit, soit, soit révi et que des solutions qui vont soit trouvées. Parce qu'elle a, elle a dit quelque chose de très important qu'il faut, qu faut vraiment mettre l'accent dessus. Elle a dit dès que le, le, le Bichinal Sibi et la communauté internationale ne ça passe inaperçu, elle voulait dire. Et vraiment, moi, je, 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 je m'aligne aussi à cette, à cette, à cette situation qu'elle a évoquée. C'est une réalité. Nous subissons tous la, la, les mêmes difficultés au Sahel. Comme vous le, vous le savez, on ne nous apprend rien. Vraiment, au-delà des défis sécuritaires dont elle a, elle a évoqué, qui nous, qui nous empêchent vraiment d'accéder à certaines zones ou à, à nous acheminer, ou nous faire acheminer certaines produit de première nécessité. C'est un aspect très, très, très chaotique qu'il faut vraiment prendre en compte et essayer de trouver des solutions de mitigation. Donc, nous, particulièrement au Niger, j'ai oublié de me présenter, je suis Hama Amani, je suis pour l'opération de la chercheur du Niger. Donc, au Niger, on a vécu une particularité depuis l'avènement du, du coup d'État. Au-delà de tout ce qu'elle a dit, qui, qui, qui que nous partageons aussi, au Niger, on a subi une, une fermeture systématique de toutes les frontières terrestres et aériennes. Donc, face à une situation pareille, il n'y a rien qui rentrait. Il n'y a aucune possibilité de faire rentrer même les produits de première nécessité, comme les médicaments et autres. Donc, moi, j'aimerais, je proposerais que des, des, des réflexions puissent porter à une situation pareille. Comment trouver des solutions de mitigation, peut-être à travers les, les importants des de, de, de Nations Unies ou des LTA solides avec des firmes internationales euh, pouvant prendre en compte des cas où un pays fait face à des fermetures des frontières terrestres et aériennes et dont les achats d'aide humanitaire doivent impérativement aboutir au profit de la population. Donc, vraiment, si les différentes sessions peuvent porter des réflexions sur, sur cet aspect, ça, ça va être beaucoup utile pour nous, le pays sahélien, nous qui sommes dans cette situation. Merci beaucoup. J'en ai fini. La parole est à vous. Uh, thank you very much, Hama, um, and thank you for your considerations and letting us know what's happening in Niger. Um, I'm going to hand over to Aliou. If, for um, any questions? Uh, yeah, good morning, good afternoon. Um, uh, Chiara, hello. Uh, my, I, I'm Aliu Haidara from UNSCR, as uh, regional supply coordinator at the UNSCR Regional Bureau of Dakar. Um, thank you very much for this, actually. And uh, I believe we have yet to wait for the next session, this uh, day two, which is on October 4th in Dakar here. Uh, because I do believe, I do feel that we are lacking the collaborative part here in Dakar. I know regional bureau has tried to do to put some uh, teams together last year when we have the Niger, Niger situation, and we actually went uh, together to Abede and uh, Togo. Then, but since then, I have not seen any anything happening in the region, and we know we have to support our country offices. Uh, towards uh, both region, West and Central Africa. So I guess those questions will come in the physical meeting next week, uh, 4th of October, and we will talk about it. But if we have other things uh, uh, for the collaboration, we really need to bring them to the table so we can actually help each other. Thank you, over to you.
Thank you so much, uh, Aliu, um, and look forward to hearing more about the outcomes from the Dakar meeting um, with the team there. Can you click again? All right, so um, I don't think there was any additional, um, any other topics. Oh, there's an, okay. Hi, Sayed, over to you. No, no, it's not, it's not our turn now. Sorry, uh, there, was, there was another hand before me, I think, Aliu. So if you want to say something, I don't know if you guys missed. Uh, no, you can go ahead and then we can take it. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, my name is Sayyid Sakhavad Hussain and I'm a head of operation with the Polish Humanitarian Action in South Sudan. So uh, it's not a question, and uh, just... Uh, a thought because you guys have already explained so many uh, things which cluster is trying to improve our collaboration. Uh, many actions, of course, we are also doing here. But one of point which I want to raise here regarding our advocacy component, this is my perception or my own thinking because uh, everyone across the globe, we are facing issues with the funding. But most of the time, what is happening, our uh, UN partners, hello? Hello? Oh, go ahead, Said. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So uh, I was saying m most of our UN partners, they are also our donors. So what happens when it comes towards logistics cost, these donors are very strict. So they never give us a flexibility to increase our operational cost in order to improve our logistics capacities. Not only about like uh, talking about uh, infrastructure or capacity building, et cetera, et cetera. So I am wondering that if logistic cluster is thinking to add this uh, topic as a part of their advocacy, whenever we are submitting our proposals, so especially UN uh, donors, they should consider this thing because ultimately uh, countries which having uh, infrastructure issues are different uh, barriers. So which is impacting everyone. And then we are reaching towards logistic cluster, please provide us support. And then logistic cluster is also not having funding. So logistic cluster is also not able to provide support at that time. So I don't know if, uh, if I was able to convey my message uh, thing, but that's it for myself. Thanks, Ed. I mean, at a, at a global level, um, as you say, we talk about advocacy. We have an advocacy working group that is just about to start at the global level and um, there's a number of related topics, I think, to the points that you are making that will be discussed. Um, and ideally what will come out of that group is that we'll have um, at, a, at a minimum agreed messaging that all the logistics cluster partners, all 934 logistics cluster partners can take away. And um, really if all of those organizations and individuals are using the same messaging, it's much stronger. And that's the idea there. There also may be other um, events and campaigns that come out of that, but at a minimum, we hope to have agreed uh, collective messaging. Now, that's the global level. Um, of course, within the country of operation, then you have slightly, as we all know, slightly different contextual challenges within each country. Um, but again, where, where we have an active cluster um, or sector, we can also work on collective advocacy uh, and, and usually what is most useful to, I know that the, the South Sudan team are on the line, so I'm going to see if they can jump in in a second, but um, what's usually most useful to the country cluster team is the data, the evidence from you and your teams that you're not able to deliver what needs to be delivered. Um, and I know sometimes that sharing some of that data can be a challenge. So perhaps that maybe is the first step to discussing it. But if there is, I think Fiona was on the line earlier. Fiona, if you want to join in this conversation as well. 
if you're still here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Um, sorry, we're a bit late. We had a, a drill here, but um, yeah, points well noted. The, there's a lot more to this than just stating that um, we can't do these things. Log cluster doesn't have money. Donors do, does give money. I'm well prepared for a follow up chat, but to unpack this here, I know fully well there's a huge vast number of issues. Prioritisation comes to one, comes to mind um, for, for the HNRP. So there's a lot of changes, a lot of challenges here, but um, ideally, Saeed will be at the um, meeting tomorrow and we're quite happy to unpack that. Over. Thanks, Fiona. If I may just add to that, uh, thanks very much, uh, Fiona and Sayed. Um, the, the, when we spoke earlier about having those frank conversations and getting together and unpacking, as, as uh, Fiona mentioned, it is also something that we're doing with the donors. The donors are part of the cluster community, uh, and we need to have those frank conversations with the entire community, inviting the donors, uh, explaining who has the, the, the added value to do what, uh, so that then we can budget each one of us uh, within our operations, what we need to budget, and then we go with one voice. But we also need to give the confidence to those donors that we're not double dipping, right? So we need to have those those honest conversations and ensure that uh, we're all speaking in a way that is pre-agreed, pre-approved and coordinated so that everybody uh, uh, jumps in and, and, and follows and, and speaks the same language. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope that answered a bit of your uh, question, Saeed. And I know you'll be having very good conversations in the meeting. The South Sudan is the first in-person meeting. They're having their meeting tomorrow. So um, well done on, on being um, very quick on implementing this. Um, I see that the team in Damascus also had their hand raised. I'm not sure who in the room, but over to you, Najib. Um, can you guys hear me? Greetings from Damascus. This is Rudy Molina, I'm Chief of Procurement and Logistics, working for UNRWA. Uh, can you guys hear me well over there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, my, my, my question comment is more in relation to the previous point. Um, and, and just looking at the participation of many colleagues, it is great to see uh, uh, partners and colleagues from other organizations such as uh, World Vision. I, I see Caritas there, uh, surely uh, Save the Children and whatnot. So um, in whatever results we achieve or we try to achieve, I'm just wondering, and probably this is something that you guys already discussed there, Natalie and team, how do we incorporate uh, the different challenges of these colleagues? Because surely they have their own issues and, and we as UN have our own uh, peculiarities, uh, if you will. So how do we really uh, sort of uh, uh, collectively incorporate the many challenges that surely they face and also are well on, of course, and then how do we kind of establish differences? Because of course, at the end of the day, we don't want to uh, have a, a mixed result that doesn't work for anybody. Uh, but but I see great interest from colleagues and it's, it's great to see them, quite frankly. I, I, I haven't been part of groups where large NGOs uh, uh, come together. So this is a great initiative, but I'm just wondering in terms of this uh, specific challenge as to how we collectively try to address uh, challenges from different entities. And, and, what, and, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Over to you. Uh, sorry, before, can we take a second question from the group here? Yes. Yes, good afternoon, good day. This is Ahmed Baradi from UNFPA Syria. Uh, it's not a question, it's also like a remark. Uh, how we can emphasize the important and the importance of the UNHRD uh, uh, clusters hubs in, uh, let's say, uh, and their cooperation with the UN field offices, uh, considering this is, say, the recent situation and the obstacles of the transportation and warehousing. Thank you. Th thanks very much for those questions. I'll, I'll start, perhaps Mary will, uh, will jump in uh, with her eloquence. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the passionate one, she's the eloquent one. Um, but how, how do we, uh, thanks very much for that question. How do we incorporate those, those challenges and how do we make sure that everybody's challenges kind of blends together in, in as one or as much as possible? Um, first of all, and, and that's what happened a year ago when we started this process, 
it was about putting them in buckets. And that's why you see you have you have three, you had four categories uh, last year and you have three this year. And trying to put them by categories. We can't tack tackle them all at once. Fine, we're limiting them to three this time. At least we start with that, right? And seeing the commonalities. Uh, and and the, common, the commonalities are much more than, than one would think. Uh, in fact, and many countries and many regions are facing similar common issues. Uh, <clears throat> single organizations are facing issues and, and sometimes think that they might be alone in this, but they're not. Uh, so that's the first thing. And by, by putting all of this into several categories, it helps us bring it all together and see the, the common denominators. Um, how do we address them? So first of all, in countries. So again, you have a, a global cell that is us here um, that are, that is working on a number of things and and continuing to drive the contribution uh, of the of the headquarters let's say of of, of all the partner organization and then you have the, the the country clusters that are day in and day out working with you guys to try to address some of these challenges number one uh, at global level the work and the journey that we've you know been discussing over the past two years has led to a number of um creation of working groups, small working groups dedicated to discuss specific issues, to address specific issues. Uh, the um, advocacy working group has just been created as a result of those conversations to try to bring in messages that we can bring all together and, and so that we can influence some of the decision makings in various areas. Um, we have also, in addition to other working groups, uh, working on, for instance, there was multiple questions about procurement, where the logistics cluster, we're not doing procurement, but partners wanted to know how they can access uh, better information about suppliers. Uh, how can they kind of uh, agree on uh, how to address the local uh, procurement uh, um, network of, of suppliers uh, and speak as one or perhaps go, go together. Ulo is doing a, a great work uh, on that in trying to bring uh, some of the organization to, together at local level uh, to, to address some of these issues. So we have already seen some of the um, low hanging fruits, if you will, or some of the, the points that we already know are common to all and trying to address them slowly, slowly. On preparedness, a lot of things has been done. And when we say preparedness, we say preparedness slash localization because that's the, that's the aim really. Uh, you saw what we, uh, uh, what the, the colleagues have presented about the regional approach, that was really bringing individual organization uh, preoccupations, needs, and challenges to discuss that at regional level because that's what makes sense, because they can create that network at regional level and then bring, it, bring that back to, to the country offices. So many things are happening that we are trying to, to, to push uh, forward, uh, but all of this comes with that network of, of partners talking to each other and exchanging. So my recommendation in that is we need to continue this. Uh, it is yielding some results. We can see them in country offices. I think that it would be a good idea for the last day that we also list and outline some of, some of those so you can see uh, concretely what those are in your regions or in your countries or for your organizations and, and what is of interest to your organization. So thanks very much for that. But Mary, I'll, I'll let you compliment on this. I just wanted to speak to the point of UNHRD. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of the person who has the question in, in Syria. Um, on the UNHRD, I don't know if our colleagues from UNHRD are here on the line. Uh, we're very much coordinating with them. In fact, we are going to them in a couple of days where we will have the global preparedness um, workshop with many partners, uh, and we we are very much working with them on specific topics. First and foremost, being on the um, prepositioning of stocks uh, together with the rest of the communities, uh, how to optimize that, what do we need for that, and so on and so forth. I know that UNHRD has also been uh, relooking, and we had that conversation with their coordinator looking at the composition of their stocks so that it actually responds to the needs of the community. Uh, for those who are familiar with the UNHRD, it can be uh, equipment such as mobile storage units or prefabricated office, but also response equipment 
uh, including tents, uh, shelter items, wash items, so on and so forth. So yes, that work is, is happening uh, very much and we will continue to do so. And uh, I will ensure that perhaps on the, um, on the last day or in some of the conversation that you're having in Syria, some of our colleague, colleagues log in. Mary, if you wanted to complement on the, uh, how do we incorporate the local challenges? I think it was more to, to expand on this idea that we're more alike than we think. Um, in this work, in working with the logistics cluster and in other collective initiatives that I've worked on, um, it's it's interesting to see. And also in my, my personal career now, I've worked with five different NGOs and now working with WFP, um, that we really do often face the same challenges. We might call them different names um, and use slightly different terminology, but 80% really of what we're talking about is the same. Um, and there might be nuances. I know if we're talking from uh, uh, specifics um, for specific supplies, we might, you know, now we're having these conversations about medical logistics. Yes, there are specific nuances, but those are again within that area. The majority of those challenges are common across all the different actors. So it's really through these discussions and bringing together ideas from across the world that I think we really come to that conclusion that actually we're a lot of us, the majority of the major challenges that we're facing are often very much the same across all of the different actors. We can continue, thank you very much. And I hope we can continue these conversations. I'm going to take, there's a couple of questions on the response in Sudan. Um, I think we can give the contact details of the cluster coordinator for Sudan to provide insights and details on the response there. Um, and I'm, I have one more question. This is from Pony Rose in South Sudan from Tier Fund. She's asking, how can the logistics cluster support partners in building a more sustainable res resilient supply chain? Actually, Pony, I don't know if you, um, would like to mute yourself and ask the question, actually. Thank you, Natalie and everyone. Yes, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Great. Yeah, so my question indeed is very uh, direct. As you have seen, how can the logistic cluster support partners in building a more sustainable and resilient uh, supply chain in fragile context like South Sudan, if I might say, particularly on funding and uh, logistic cooperation. Thank you. Thanks very much, Pony. Um, at the risk of being a bit controversial, uh, <laughs> which I always am, uh, I'll say one thing. I think that the sustainable and resilient supply chain starts with the private sector. Um, and that's, that's what we need to uh, support as much as we can. Uh, and I'm not saying this in the sense that we should not support the humanitarian organizations, but our primary uh, objective should be to ensure that the countries and the private sector in the countries where we operate are functional, are resilient to shock and are able to continue. Um, you see, if you, if you compare it to programmatic clusters, right, they, in order to be able to step out and to leave the countries, they need to have a government in front of them with a national uh, management agency, a ministry of health or agriculture and so on, that is able to take over and, 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 and follow up and continue the response. In our case as logistics, we, the moment we, we can step out is when that private sector is able to operate. Um, and so it links up to, to, to your question. So I'm not saying that we should not support the organizations, but our primary concern should be to ensure that uh, local um, systems are sustainable and, and resilient, number one. Um, number two, I'd like to also, and perhaps because that, that's something that we've seen over the years and we have explained uh, repeatedly, while we have a, a full responsibility to help all our partners with advocacy uh, to ensure that the donor community and the governments with whom we're working with 
understand the work that is being done, why it's been done, how it's been done, how efficiently it is being done, so that they in turn receive the resources that they require to operate. Um, there is the, that piece is the is the is the advocacy piece, right? And 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 to some extent, joint fundraising, the frank conversation that I was talking about with the donors, for instance, uh, to be able to uh, tell each other this is what we need, and without this, we can't operate. At the same time, there is also a responsibility within the organizations to ensure that one their own uh, direct fundraising is done, so that that's very clear. But then when, when when this is done, and, and there was a comment earlier, uh, was it from Syria, I think, um, on, on, the, um, on whether or not we should, our responsibility is to fundraise for others or, or how we should ensure that we do not double count or double dip and so on and so forth. And, and there, I think I, I really want to ask all the partners, how do you ensure that this is done at country level? Often that conversation happens at global level, but at country level, it's a bit blurred. Uh, so the point was uh, the, UN, the UN are often our partners and donors. Um, and, and, and yes, you have agreement with maybe UN organization or the World Bank or a government for whom you operate under which you have a part of your operational cost. And then you're also going to uh, the BHAs and the ECHOs and, and so on and so forth to uh, uh, request part of the funding. And then you might also use some of the common services that are made available uh, either through the cluster or through other organizations. And you know all of this becomes a bit blurry. So I think that I, I will also say that we have an individual responsibility as organization to really uh, and honestly look at it and say, okay, this is what I need from whom, and this is how I need to split and present my requirements so that, again, we, we continue to build that trust uh, and we can do our humanitarian response uh, plans and appeals in a way where we're showing this is really what we need. We're not trying to get it on both sides. We all, the needs are huge and we do not have the resources to meet them all. We know that. Yet, if we build that trust, or as we build the, continue to build that trust, that's when we will uh, probably get more resources to, to, to respond to some of our challenges. Thank you very much, uh, Meili. Um, and I, Pony, I hope that answered your question, but I'm sure you will have many more discussions uh, in your meeting tomorrow and even then at the global um, online consolidation that we will have on November 6th. Um, so just to wrap up a little bit of admin and then I'll hand over um, to Mary Meline for any final remarks. Um, on the webpage, we put the link in the chat. You will find the, uh, the agenda for each uh, location. You will find the timeline for which dates you'll be having the meeting in every single location. You'll find the contact details in case you are in that country or region or able to, to travel there for the meeting. Um, you will also find a document called Frequently Asked Questions that could answer any other questions you may have on the meeting. But in case you have any other um, questions or, or comments, please feel free to reach out to us. We do have a global um, email that we will provide now in the group chat, um, if not in, to your cluster coordinator in country. And with this, I'm going to hand over to, to Mary and Meili for any closing remarks. Um, I'll keep it very short because we're coming up to time now, but just to say I am extremely excited to hear back from what's gonna happen from tomorrow through the next three weeks in all of the countries and regions, talking about the topics that are so important to you and to us. Um, and I wish you great discussions. Thanks, and, and, and same, very, very happy. Uh, um, really a call to engage, uh, a call to, to, to speak freely, frankly, to put everything on the table so that together we can uh, find those solutions. Uh, very happy to see 
the the not only the quantity of colleagues around the table but the the difference in in backgrounds organization background organization countries and so on and so forth that is gonna uh, that is to me gonna be the, the the key to to that exchange that we want to that we want to see uh, and that we have already seen over the past year so let's continue that um let's challenge each other that let's ask ourselves the right questions and let's make sure that we put everything on the table then we will have time to prioritize and focus on 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 the essential the most you know uh, the, the the collective uh, uh, issues that we want to resolve but the sky's the limit for now we need to have those conversation we need to put uh, uh, all our thoughts all our challenges all our ideas all our creative and innovative ideas um, and then we will uh, we will push those uh, those results forward so thank you very much for, for your engagement and very fruit, fruitful local meetings. And with that, we conclude the, the kickstart of the GLM and look forward to seeing some of you in some of the locations and to hearing more about um, the different meetings and seeing you again on November 6th. <laughs>